Hey guys, this week I'm showing you how I do my cake sketches on the computer. Firstly, I have to apologise for three things. One, my voice. I'm still recovering from a cold. Two, it seems to cut the bottom half of my screen off. And three, my arrow cursor has filmed as a flickering plus a minus sign, which is a little bit annoying. So I'm working here in Photoshop. However, any sort of drawing programme will do. Photoshop isn't all that user friendly to begin with. It can get quite complex, but I learnt myself how to use it on YouTube. I'm sure you can create something similar in any regular Microsoft Paint sort of program. Firstly, we want our cake template. Grab yourself the circle tool or ellipse tool, which most programs should have. If you're working in Photoshop or something similar, it's handy to use layers. The only way I can describe this is it's like a sheet of A4 paper and each layer you place on top is like a clear piece of tracing paper. So we are going to create a new layer to put our template on. I'm just dragging a very squashed circle to create the top of our cake drum. As you can see, you can turn the layer on and off, leaving just the background. Then you want to make an exact copy of this by duplicating it. Now we have two. You want to place them quite close together so it looks like a cake drum. Then select your line tool. As you can see, the line is quite thick, so you can change the thickness up here until it is close to the thickness of your circles. Now fully join the sides together, making sure there are no holes or gaps. On the right, you can see it has placed each shape on its own layer. You want to select both circles and both lines and click on Merge Layers. This will stick all the shapes together on one layer. So it's a bit like taking a glue stick and sticking all of your pieces of tracing paper together. Now when we hide this layer, you can see it's all in one piece. Now you want to take the eraser tool or rubber tool to rub out these lines which depicts the back of the cake drum. You can be neater and take your time, I'm just doing this quickly. Now we have our cake drum. To keep track of where everything is, you can rename the layer to board. Now we need a cake to put on it, so create a new layer. Do the exact same thing again, but move the circles further apart for a nice deep cake. If you want to move the board, make sure you select the board layer on the right and then you can drag it out of the way. Continue drawing your cake, again making sure there are no gaps and merge the cake layers together. Now you can name this layer Cake. Go ahead and carefully rub out the extra lines. As your cake and your board are on separate layers, you can move each one independently. Just make sure you have the right one selected as you move it. Now you have a single tier cake on a board. With the cake layer selected, you can even stretch it by dragging the selection boxes, turning it into a double barrel cake or even a short separator. Now to save you from drawing these every single time, you can save them. Hide your cake layer so you're left with the board. As you can see, hiding your background layer makes the image look like grey and white squares. This indicates that it has no background at all. Think of it as taking your A4 paper away and now all you have left is your clear tracing paper layer with your board drawing on it. You can now save this layer as a PNG file. Saving it as a PNG will make sure it stays in its clear tracing paper state. If you save it as a regular JPEG, it will add a background to it automatically using the grey and white squares. Go ahead and save yours. Then you want to hide your board 
and bring the cake layer back in. Save this as another PNG. Now you have a saved board template and a saved cake template to use again and again. Now, what if you want a two-tier cake? Simply duplicate your cake layer. You can use the selection squares to squeeze this cake thinner. Now we have something that looks a little like a six inch and an eight inch cake on a drum. If you need to make the board bigger, you can. Just make sure you have the right layer selected. It's such an easy mistake to make if you're new to layers. They take some getting used to. Now let's colour it. Grab your paint bucket tool, nearly all programs have this, and let's say we want to make it pink. Put your bucket over your shape and colour it in. If your whole page turns pink, that means either you haven't selected the board layer on the right, or you have a teeny tiny gap in your board outline where the paint has escaped. You can even add a deeper pink to the board edge for the ribbon. Now select the bottom cake layer and let's colour that a paler pink. Now select the top cake and let's colour that one white. Now this works because they are layered like tracing paper. So the top cake is currently my top piece of tracing paper. If I was to take this and put it below my other layers of paper, it would place it behind them. You can see the bottom of the tier is actually hidden by the bottom cake. The drawing is now behind the other one. All you have to do is make sure your layers are in order to see what's in front and what's behind. Okay, so let's move this cake down a bit. Select all your drawings, the board and the two cakes, and now you can drag them all together. You can even squeeze them or make them taller. But to stop this from happening and to keep the right proportions as you resize it, click the little chain icon up here. This makes sure it doesn't get squashed or stretched. It just makes it bigger or smaller. So what about a three tier? Let's duplicate the top tier to make another white cake. And we can rename them to help us keep track of what's what. Bottom, middle and top. Again, to move the whole cake, select all your layers, except the background, and move them. Now we have our wedding cake base, coloured and ready to design. Maybe they want text. Click the text tool, and in a rough gold colour, type in your message. It's a little big, so we can highlight the text and change the size and the fonts using your text controls. As you can see, the text is also on its own layer now and can be moved independently. Just to demonstrate how the layers work again, pulling the text layer below the middle cake will hide it behind the cake. Pull it back to the top to bring it out in front. Now let's add flowers. I've selected the colour of the ribbon on the board and you want to create a new layer just for the flowers. With the brush tool, you can select lots of different shapes and effects. I'm just going to select the regular round brush. The size slider does what it says, makes your brush bigger or smaller. Now I'm just quickly scribbling on a round blob for the body of the flower. Let's have one up here and another down here. Now I want a slightly darker shade and a smaller brush. Let's 
loopy scribbles can indicate a fluffy type of flower or a swirly one can indicate a rose type of flower. It's just something simple, quick and loose to give people the idea it will be some sort of pink flower. Now let's add leaves. Choose a green colour and again we want these on their own layer. I'm just drawing a quick vine of leaves and using a darker colour to indicate the veins. You can of course go to town on details, this is just a rough idea. So as the leaves are on the top layer, they show up in front of the flower. We want those behind the rose, so select and drag your leaf layer below the flower one. Now you can see the extra stalk and the leaves are now neatly behind the rose. Because they are on their own layer, we can move them independently making them big or smaller, rotating them and placing them where you want. And to save you from drawing them all again, we can duplicate the layer. We want them to face the other way, so we can right click and select flip horizontal. Now it's flipped the drawing and we can move that into place. OK, so now we've got a quick doodle done, what if the couple want ruffles on the bottom? Select your bottom cake and create a new layer above it. This way, the pattern we draw will be on top of the bottom cake, but will still be behind the flower and the leaves. Let's choose a slightly darker shade and draw on some random swirly shapes with a paintbrush. This just gives the impression there's some sort of fluffy texture on this tier. If you think you've drawn it too dark, we can quickly fix it by selecting the ruffle layer and coming up here to the opacity. We are currently at 100%, full blown and pink. If we slide it down, the drawing becomes slightly more see-through, showing the pink colour of the cake underneath and making it lighter. That will do. Now, what if you want something more specific or polished? What if you want to make sure that the flower is in fact a rose, or you just simply don't feel comfortable drawing one? Head to Google and type in Pink Rose PNG. Remember, a PNG means the image doesn't have a background. Click on Images and see what pops up. Now, I have a tip, and yes, it's confusing if you're new to all these file names. So we know a black and white box background indicates that it's transparent. So you're going to get drawn to this one, aren't you? But this is not actually a PNG file. Instead, you want to click on an image with a white background like this. As you can see on the right, as it opens up, it now contains the boxes. So you want white on the page and boxes in the preview this is more than likely the PNG you're looking for. Right click and save it as a PNG on your computer. This one here with a square background in both the preview and the image gallery won't be a true PNG file, even though it says it is here. You'll open this on your computer and it will be a pink rose and it'll have a square fixed background. So that's just a little tip for finding the right file types. There's always a few red herrings in there. So let's go ahead and open your rows from the computer. Over on the right, you'll see it's already a layer. It doesn't have a background. Drag the rows up onto your drawing by hovering it over the top left tab where your sketch is. You'll see it's added the rows on a new layer. You can now place this onto your drawing, duplicate it or manipulate it however you like. What if it's just not quite the right colour? Make sure your rows layer is selected and head up to the image menu and then adjustments. There are a whole heap of options, but I mainly use the hue and saturation option. The hue slider will change its colour. The saturation will either mute the colour until it turns grey or go the other way to make it ultra colourful. The lightness does what it says and will make it lighter or darker. I'm aiming for something that complements the bottom pink cake more. 
Now, instead of doing the whole thing again with the other rows, we can just delete it and replace it with a duplicate of the right one. You can also do the same with the leaves if you wish. Once you're done, you'll want to save this drawing as a JPEG to send to your clients. You also might want to add your watermark to it for a bit of protection. A JPEG means all those layers on the right get flattened or glued to your background and become one flat image. I'd suggest also saving this file as a PSD. This is the Photoshop project file, which keeps all your layers separate like they are now. So in a few days time, you can still open it and tweak the layers or the colors. So say you've sent the JPEG drawing to your client and they say it's great, but they've changed their mind and would love swags instead of ruffles. You just need to open up your Photoshop file again, which will look just like this, and you can hide your ruffles by clicking the eye. Make a new layer and draw in the new swags. Again, if you're not comfortable drawing, you can just Google them. Now they look a little flat. To show they are 3D, or this is helpful if the swags are white on white, you can add an effect to that layer. Here I'm choosing the drop shadow option. Its default is pretty dark, so we can just decrease the opacity to make it lighter. This will help to show up better on a cake where the swags and the cake are the same colour. And it was as easy as that to change rather than have to draw it all again. And because you hid the layer instead of deleting it, you can toggle between the two, the ruffles and the swags. You know, just in case they change their minds again. Just hide and show the different layers to mix and match the different elements. So they come back and they say, yep, that's great, but we've changed our message and would love it to say Mr. and Mrs. instead. You can simply edit the text layer, making it smaller and squashing the message together using all the different text controls. Right, let's undo that as the love message looked better. Now you can save this new one as a JPEG and send them over the revised bottom tier to see what they think. Hopefully this helps a little. It can make the design process a lot quicker because if they wanted a revision, you'd likely have to draw it all over again if you did it with traditional paper and pens. I do it this way to help the couple visualize how it could look but I always explain that the colours or the placement of things may change upon finishing the actual cake, such as this one. It's very close to the drawing, but you'll see I put two candles on the left instead of two on the right. It's just what looked better at the time of making it in real cake. And also the castle was just a Google clip art. I explained it would be made in my own style, so not an exact copy. It's just to help them visualise. Here's another one. Again, it's quite close, but the ghosts have slightly different placements and we swapped the skulls from gold to silver. The cake also ended up being much taller too, but it's never a bad thing. Hopefully this has given you enough tips that you can go away and create your own drawings. Like I said, Photoshop isn't all that beginner friendly and you don't need Photoshop to create doodles like this. It's just what I personally use. You can use any sort of drawing or painting program, but you just may have a few limitations if they don't have layers. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know below in the comments and leave me a little thumbs up. And I'll see you again next week. Bye guys.